Today we're going to be responding to a video made about me by a YouTuber who goes by the name of Sunny V2 and he has over 4 million subscribers. So in this video he's claiming I'm worse than that vegan teacher. I've never heard of this guy before, but neither. He gets a shit ton of views, so he's averaging like 2 million views per video and the video he uploaded about Tash 7 days ago already has 2 million. Oh. So, yeah, that's a lot. I haven't seen it. Tash hasn't seen it, so this is going to be our first time reacting to it. Let's see what he has to say. I expect it to be a load of rubbish. And see the thumbnail? Yes. Yeah, it so. has crazy, crazy written on my forehead. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being crazy. I'd rather be crazy than be an animal abuser. Well, let's analyse this thumbnail quickly. So yeah. they've, he's got you there, like you said, with crazy on your head and your cow uniform uh, painted on your body, so that's kind of iconic. Um, but they've also got that vegan teacher next to you with her mouth <laughs> shut. So I think the, <laughs> the imagery there is that you're, I don't know, you're louder than than her, trying to create some contrast yeah. between you well, and I think Katie. I, yeah, it's these comments I've seen for quite a few years because this isn't the first time a YouTuber's posted a video saying that I'm more insane than that vegan mm. teacher. So the... The comments from people was like, wow, vegan teacher is an angel compared to this vegan booty crazy lady. Yeah. Like, that's like the narrative. So yeah. I think that's what it's also trying to suggest. Interesting. All right, <laughs> let's get into it. Vegan booty is often called the vegan teacher's daughter. She thinks walking your dog is animal abuse. Her Pause there. Uh, what? <laughs> God. Do you think that walking your dog is animal abuse? No. Absolutely not. I mean, I think there are ways of walking your dog that could be considered abuse. I've seen people drag their dogs along in sweltering heat, then yeah, of course I would consider that animal abuse. But the act itself of walking your dog is not animal abuse. No, of course not. It's stupid. But he's Wonder trying to create clickbait from. at the start of the video, so yeah. mm, well done. Has been on the news for calling horses slaves and believes it's okay fighting butchers, service workers, and even children at their birthday party. The government has banned her from living in her hometown and her first viral... <laughs> Another lie. Another yeah. big lie. The government has banned you from living in your hometown. What the fuck? video will start to show you why. The event seen behind her is the Million Paws Walk, where families meet to walk their dogs together and help raise funds for animals in need. Well, Vegan Booty called the event... Bullshit. That RSPCA fund, like, create fundraisers to help animals in need, when in fact if you see the footage inside farms and slaughterhouses that are RSPCA approved farms and slaughterhouses, you'll see how abhorrent it is. In fact, they're just a big scam organisation trying to disguise themselves as a welfareist organisation who care about animals but literally make money from their enslavement, torture, abuse, rape and murder. It's the most violent thing that you could ever participate in. Protest. Well, that oh. was... Yeah, so in that video, he's cut it very cleverly to say that I'm referring to the dog walking event as the most violent thing ever. When I was actually, in fact, talking about pigs in gas chambers and the other abhorrent atrocities that RSPCA put their labels on. And that's exactly what I was talking about. That's why myself and other animal rights activists were at this event, not to protest walking dogs, to protest the animal abuse organization RSPCA for funding and making profit off the animal holocaust and slavery industries. This guy is already starting off to be worse than mainstream media, even not even Channel 7 is this bad at reporting you. No. <laughs> that every animal should be treated the way that dogs are. Why would you love one but pay for the suffering and abuse of other animals? Pigs are in fact more intelligent than dogs. Hypocritically, however, Vegan Booty owned a dog herself, which she tied to a leash and used it to pull her while... This guy's Saying really I'm digging hypocrite. deep. hypocrite. Yeah. Hypocrite. So yeah, he's completely twisted the narrative of what's going on. Um, and I will mention that that video says it was posted five years ago, but I actually wasn't vegan at that point in time. I've been vegan for seven years, so I don't know why that's posted so late. But anyway, that video was 
maybe two or year, three years before I became vegan. So again, I haven't been vegan for my entire life. Most of my life, I was an animal abuser and I made the decision to go vegan after seeing the documentary Dominion and, and animal abuse footage. Oh, she skated. It's pretty funny how you're protesting, yet you have a dog pulling you. Pretty hypocritical, and the hypocrisy didn't stop there. Because Vegan Booty then showed up at a charity football match, disrupting 35,000 spectators because she thought her cause was way more important. In a satisfying turn of events, she was fined $1,800 for the stunt, yet this wasn't too expensive for the exposure it provided. Provided. Would you do it all again? Yes, 100%. However, at around the... Is your cause way more important and what cause were you trying to raise awareness to here? I'm trying to raise awareness to the animal holocaust. Each year, literally tr up to 3 trillion non-human animals are brutally murdered for human pleasure, including food, clothing, entertainment, etc. So, of course, this cause is more important than this historic football match for women yeah of course you're trying to raise awareness to the to the animal holocaust um if you were raising awareness to dogs being murdered um, i'm sure everybody would be cheering you on in this field right now so yeah However, at around the same time, Isaac Butterfield was going viral for his anti-vegan videos featuring Tash in the worst vegans on TikTok. Why is your name Vegan Booty when you run around with that? Change your name to Vegan Pancake Ass and let us all get on with our lives. This gave Tash a chance to respond, although she was met with a brutal dislike ratio as Isaac's audience offered their very first downvote. He therefore slammed Vegan Booty again. Meat's amazing, it's delicious, and guess what bitch? I'm gonna have a big dirty steak for dinner. I hope you enjoy your broccoli, you tiny little child. Yeah, what a caveman. <laughs> That's his argument. I'm just gonna enjoy eating the the bodies of murdered victim and fuck you. Like, that's Isaac Butterfield for you. He yeah, is not a very disgusting. intelligent person, to say the least. No, that's disgusting. With comments such as who else came from Isaac's channel, this was only helping vegan booty grow. She'd use her newly found fame to launch a vegan clothing company. <laughs> that's not that, even your clothing. And that's not me either. <laughs> Hey, that's a that's a good message, anti animal cruelty club. Yeah, so everyone show. should be, and I think most people would agree with that anyway. But Absolutely. they're just not vegan, so they're the fucking hypocrites here. Yes. But yeah, that's not my clothing brand. What is this? Yeah, is this one of your videos or? Yeah, this was actually in um, Q yeah, at the so. KFC protest. Yeah. This was before I did a disruption. Oh, yeah. Yeah, spoofing the anti-social social club to instead read anti-animal cruelty club. Well, as so I we need like a lie count with this guy. I don't know, we could be at like yeah. three or four, I don't know. Then launched his own anti-vegan social club, leading vegan booty to call in heavy reinforcements. She discussed is Isaac Butterfield's anti-vegan club responsible for this vegan phobia with no one other than that vegan teacher. He literally has shirts made that say anti-vegan club. The pair became so close that they'd call each other family. Hi sweetie, how are you? Hello, hey mom, how are you going? However, it was obvious vegan booty was the crazier of the two. She began infiltrating supermarkets wearing an animal onesie before standing in the milk section, dissuading shoppers from their purchase. For obvious reasons, staff weren't too happy about this, and even after being ejected, she still yelled outside the store. Her babies are taken away from her! What I was doing in that protest was trying to bring to light the abhorrent abuse, rape and murder that happens in the dairy industry where mother cows are raped and forcibly impregnated against their will and after a nine month pregnancy when the mother dairy cow gives birth her babies are kidnapped from her and the reason for that, the reason the farmer separates them is so he can take her milk and sell it in dairy products and if the Baby is born male, he's shot in the head by the farmer or just sent to a slaughterhouse just days to weeks old and murdered. So that's the reality of the dairy industry. So that's exactly what I was doing in that protest. 
was permanently banned from Australia's two main supermarkets, yet this didn't stop her protests, as vegan booty would only get worse. She'd shop at McDonald's in a much more detailed costume, being kicked out not by staff, but instead this time police. Hilariously, this guy began his own protest, countering her with a legendary sign. In what a loser. <laughs> Look at him. This guy began face. his own protest, countering her with a legendary sign. And to say that's legendary is equally loserish. Oh my god, like... What are we, like, ten-year-olds saying, Haha, meat is delicious, it's so funny. Yeah, vegan meat is fucking delicious, but guess what? Animal flesh is comes from abuse and murder, it's not fucking delicious. Yeah. It's disgusting, it's abhorrent, and it's cruel. In Vegan Booty's next stunts, she walked into KFC and poured orange paint everywhere while blasting dying animal noises for over 15 minutes. Not gonna lie, but you're incredibly selfish to the people that work at that place. All they're trying to do is do their job. I feel so sorry for the workers. I feel sorry for the workers. Of course. The workers were- okay, firstly, the workers were absolutely loving that protest. They all had their phones out, they were excited. It, it probably made their day, if not their entire fucking year, <laughs> yeah. that animal rights activists came in and disrupted. But of course but he's forgetting the victims. Of course, exactly. Saying, victimising the workers in this situation, who their living is to cook up the murder victims' bodies to sell to people, is just disgusting to say that they're the victims in this situation. I was there speaking up for... The victims of the animal holocaust who literally have their fucking throat slit for people to eat kfc and their bodies and their secretions and wear their their skin etc it's just insane and secondly the thing that came from that protest as well is oh and the, all the poor workers had to clean up the fake blood um well firstly i cleaned up the fake blood on the ground so no the workers did not do that and even if they did what about the workers that have to clean up the actual blood from slaughterhouses? The workers who you are paying to chop the heads off innocent animals who are terrified for their life. I mean, yeah, it's just insanity that people are focused on what I'm doing, saying it as if it's just this terrible thing and not even realising what's happening inside farms and slaughterhouses. Yeah. While even other vegans called vegan booty out. She is giving veganism a bad name. Wrote about- What the fuck is that? <laughs> I have no Who idea. the fuck are you? <laughs> is she even vegan? Is she a, an apologist vegan? Oh, vegans give me a bad name. Fuck off. I'm not here to represent fucking vegans. I'm here to represent non-human animals. Who are subjected to slavery, rape, torture, abuse, and murder, so get fucked. People wrote about Tasha's public stunts. Instead of promoting vegans, you kind of just embarrass them, and nothing showed this better than her children's party meltdown. To sum it up, we don't care about what vegans think of us. We only care about what <laughs> non human animals would be thinking of us if we weren't speaking up for them as they're going into slaughterhouses or are confined in farms, in cages, and etc. It's. We only have the victims in mind. We don't give a fuck about what other vegans say, or non-vegans, for that matter. We obviously take on the support of other vegans, and we'll take critique, if it's constructive, on as well, but we only have animals in our mind. These two horses were clearly very well looked after, and were waiting outside a family festival so kids could take... Man, there's one thing after the other. Very well looked after, Tash. Can you... Well, should we just let this play first, then we can come back to that. Take a picture. Well, of course, vegan booty somehow thought it was abuse. I just want to know who the slave owner is. Okay, thank this you. Disgusting. This is animal abuse. Oh. 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 Okay, so abuse. Let's let's break that down. So we, we, we see animal slavery as abuse. It doesn't matter how well they're treated anyway. Um, we don't think that this is in the best interest of these ponies because they should be living their life freely um, on a, in a sanctuary, for example. Or fundamentally, they shouldn't be bred forcibly into existence for human gain. But abuse doesn't just mean cruelty, inflicting physical pain. Um, it, can, it can be the misuse of power for personal gain. Slavery is a form of abuse. We all would accept that it's human abuse to enslave humans, so in the exact same way it is animal abuse to enslave non-human animals. 
Um, beyond that, their, their best interests aren't really being met here. They're out on a hot day, they have to be smothered by children, they're dressed up. Um, that's not their best interest. They don't consent to that fundamentally. Yeah, they're literally treated as commodities rather than the people who they actually are, individuals who have wants and needs to not be exploited and commodified for a children's event. It's just insane. I mean, put it in the context of humans. If there were human slaves there and I said, this is slavery, who's a slave owner? This is animal abuse, uh, like non-human animal abuse. This is disgusting. Imagine this guy saying, oh, well, they look really well looked after and look, this crazy woman saying it's abuse and slavery. Well, yeah, okay, just because you treat your slaves well it doesn't fucking mean anything. It doesn't take away from the fact that it's slavery and of course it is abuse. Abuse is not always physical cruelty and or violence. It can also be emotional as well yeah. and misusing someone, exploiting Absolutely. them. And that's exactly what this is. It's disgusting and it's animal exploitation and slavery. Yeah, these ponies don't have a choice. They're just kept out here and just on concrete. They're out there for probably eight hours a day. Um, they don't have a choice here. So fundamentally, um, we need to respect that and give them the life that they actually deserve and to live freely. Bryden failed to make any decent points. If you were in their position, would you be happy? <laughs> Although vegan booty wasn't finished there. She'd then go into the festival to find the horses again, disrupting all photos by making a public announcement. These innocent beings are no different to other lovers, dogs and cats. They look like they're under so much stress. This awesome dad then quickly stopped their antics. No photos of my kids, man. Yeah, I'm not taking photos. No, we'll just keep walking that way then. Keep walking that way. And thankfully, police were there to intervene. After posting her video to TikTok, Tash again made national news in which they'd interview the horse. Who's that? Nobody. Horse's owner. Meg Freeman <laughs> owns the pony business. She said she's obsessed with us. This Meg Freeman. She follows us around all the time to all our court appearances. She's there. She wants to get in everything. She can't help herself. She's um one of the oh, what's the word? I guess you'd say co-founders of the anti Tash Peterson Facebook page, and she seems to spend her entire life in that group. Um, if she's not in that group talking about us, she'll be at one of our court appearances. She's obsessed. There she's being bombarded with abuse by vegan protesters. Meg Freeman wants her charged. They're like terrorists. They're not going to go away. Well, only one terrorist. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What a fucking let's, uh, let's, uh, let's get off the word uh, terrorist here. Eh? I think what happens in slaughterhouses is a form of terrorism. Right. So non-vegans in that so, context would be. Let's pull this across. So, oh, I can't, we'll read it across here. So, a terrorist is a person who uses unlawful violence and intimidation, especially against civilians. So, unlawful violence, intimidation. Um, the only violence I see is towards non-human animals who are being forced into slaughterhouses and are tortured on farms. Um, and it's also violent to emotionally abuse animals in the sense of these, these pony slaves. Their best interests are not being met. Um, so... We're not terrorists. Non-vegans are terrorists to animals. One week later, Vegan Booty announced, I'll be going to court on the 13th of May as I received a summons for a restraining order from the owner of Ponies for All Occasions. Those who dislike me are triggered because I've made them realize that they're animal abusers. What I'm going through right now isn't a loss. It only means we're winning. I'm always a non-violent protester and I never harass anyone. I don't even think the vegan teacher is this crazy. This girl is making vegan teachers seem like an angel. At least the vegan teacher didn't have her own number plates as this made vegan <gasps> booty foolishly oh. recognisable. Meat and cheese smeared across her family's car. Vegan activist Tash Peterson says this cruel joke crosses the line. People recognised her car, then threw meat bones on her driveway. Yet yeah, another lie. I didn't even have my number plates at that point in time. That was in 2019. And I got my number plates in 2020. So yeah, it had nothing to do with the number plates. But as an animal rights activist, I'm targeted and my address has been leaked on the internet. Hence why people came to my house and threw animal flesh and bones on my car and driveway. 
Trolls weren't the only people who showed up at her house. I've woken up once again to the police knocking at my door. So I've been issued with another barring notice. Controversial vegan activist is banned from every pub in her state after becoming notorious for wild stunts where she screams at innocent families. Anything that sells alcohol I'm not allowed into. A penalty of $10,000 applies if I break this barring notice. The ban had come after another decision disgusting protests. So they misuse the law against you a lot, especially with these alcohol barring notices. Do you want to like briefly explain that? Yeah, so basically a liquor barring notice in Western Australia is designed to be used for people who are drunk and or disorderly and violent in liquor license venues to obviously prevent alcohol related violence and fights and essentially whenever I protest somewhere that has a liquor license for example this protest just shown or even the football st stadium one shown earlier in the video I've received a liquor barring notice which isn't permanent but it is it bans me from liquor license venues in the entire state of Western Australia for a certain period of time um, one, like the fourth one that I've received has just ended at a period of 12 months. So yeah, it's a complete misuse of the law and abuse of power in attempt to silence animal rights activists and stop our right to protest for non-human people. Yet Vegan Booty was still convinced that she'd done nothing wrong. I don't really have a right to freedom of speech here in Australia. It's honestly pretty corrupt. If you ask me. Her freedom of speech is just going to a restaurant and screaming like a lunatic about murder. There is a difference between speech and screaming. Your freedom of speech, our freedom to eat meat. Goodbye. She'd therefore leave Perth and spend a month protesting in Melbourne, but when she tried to fly back home, the government said she couldn't return. The Australian police have banned me from entering into my own city. If I choose to fly home, I could face a one year imprisonment. Her application was rejected based on her statements made in public, and after eventually having the rejection overturned, you will not believe how awful she became. So we've missed one key component to this story, which is this was during COVID lockdowns and Western Australia in particular was, what's the word, quite draconian mm. in terms of like allowing people to enter the state during that period of time. Um, and so essentially you had to apply for something called a G2G pass. You can see this screenshot here um, of the G2G. And so you had to put in an application to be able to fly into the state of WA if it was accepted. Um, essentially, yeah, my G2G pass was unsuccessful and I kept applying for it and it just continually got declined and I would spend hours on the phone trying to call police and just to find the right person to figure out why I was being declined as a resident of Western Australia to return home from Melbourne. And then I finally received a response from a constable police officer essentially saying that because I had announced I was leaving Western Australia for good and moving to live in Melbourne, that was the reasoning as to why it was being declined. And the insane thing about that was, well, that is insane, but I actually had never said that. <laughs> I never said I was leaving Western Australia for good. And even if I did, that that's literally just words. That yeah. doesn't, how can that stop someone from returning? It's I still crazy. had a Western Australian driver's license. My home address was in Western Australia. Yeah. Like it was just astounding that this, the police system is so fucking corrupt that they just didn't want me back. That's, so, that's what it came down to, a personal yeah. issue against me. And it's like, nah, we're not going to let her back in. <laughs> yeah. Corrupt. Believe how awful she became. She'd go back to harassing the innocent pony business before trying to ruin the life of a hard-working chef. John Mountain owns Fire Restaurant in Northern Perth, where on one un- Ruin the life. I'm sure he's going to tell the story now, but fucking hell. 
What a load of crap again. Jesus, this guy is like, he's like mainstream media on steroids, the way he's reporting all of this, Jesus. Yeah. Shooming night, a diner made a complaint about the lack of vegan options on the menu and was charged $32 for vegetables. Well, rather than bending the knee, John instead stated it is not a vegan restaurant. And if customers want vegan options, they should go elsewhere. Where, announcing on their Facebook page, sadly all vegans are now banned from fire for mental health reasons. We thank you for your understanding. All vegans are banned. End of. No more. Never again. God help them. The chef's bold move. Well, except for one person known as Vegan Booty. <laughs> She showed up at the restaurant not just once but twice, blasting dying animal noises even after being ejected, having disrupted his business multiple times. I don't know, I've just noticed this interesting thing, he said it twice now, the sounds of dying animals. It's just an interesting way he's mm. phrasing that, I haven't really heard it like that before, but he doesn't want to say the sounds of animals in slaughterhouses. Well, he's actually, avoiding that. Yeah, that's actually what the media say a lot. Dying when, animals. Yeah, yeah, when the media report on my protests, if I'm playing screams of animals being brutally murdered, they'll just say dying animal sounds. Yeah, well, it, it's this is victim erasure. So they're erasing the victim in this saying that, well, they're just dying. So when we hear that in our minds, we just imagine any animal dying just could be dying at the vet, you know, euthanasia, they, you know, they're suffering and so we had to help them ease, ease their pain, for example. Whatever, the, whatever the, the person wants to think, dying can mean a whole bunch of things. It's morally neutral. Um, whereas slaughterhouses, I don't think any, no animal wants to go into a slaughterhouse, so he's avoiding saying that. Yeah. And he's avoiding saying words such as murder and abuse, because that's exactly what these animals go through as well. Yeah, so what I actually was playing through the audio in these protests was the sounds of pigs literally screaming in agony and terror inside carbon dioxide gas chambers. Um, carbonic acid is filled, is created in their lungs and nose and mouth. Yeah. And they literally burn from the inside out. So it's a very torturous murder. Not that, you know, a non-torturous murder justifies it because a lot of people say, oh, but they just fall asleep in the carbon dioxide gas chambers. Firstly, that's bullshit. And secondly, even if that were the case, it doesn't take away the fact that it's blatant murder. And you can see footage for yourself. Um, it's been exposed in Australia and the UK and maybe some other nations, I'm not sure, of the violence that happens inside these the carbon dioxide gas chambers. Yeah. Having disrupted his business multiple times, the chef understandably lost it, yet still- That's understandable, assaulting a woman, uh, assaulting anybody is not understandable. If you don't like the sounds of pigs inside of carbon dioxide gas chambers, well, you should be vegan. You shouldn't be attacking vegans. Still took responsibility for the damage Tash had done. And I'm sorry to say, Layla, I lost my cool, and I lost my cool because now it's really disrupting my business. And I could see the look on my customers' faces, my staff, they were all a little scared and a bit nervous. And Well, actually, we saw the CCTV footage of inside the store, and most of them were smiling, almost laughing and recording it. They didn't Again, care. they were loving it. Yeah. Most yeah. people are that way. They get excited that something crazy happens. Oh, the crazy vegans have come. I've got some footage to post and show everyone. Nobody is scared of a non-violent activist. It's absolute bullshit. And they always point to the children. What about the children? In fact, the children seem to stand there and watch and want to watch, in fact, because even they're not threatened by Tash. Like, it's just, it's absurd really is and i just i stormed out sadly for vegan booty however her activism exploded the restaurant's popularity interesting let's go back all right so listen to what he says here about tash damaging his business the damage tash had done and i'm sorry to the damage tash has done and then nervous and i just i stormed out sadly for vegan booty however her activism exploded the restaurant so what is it have you damaged the business or have you exploded the business into um, in, in, into more revenue? It's literally every non-vegan who is against us has this narrative of we want to do everything we can to stop Tash from damaging and ruining family businesses. Yep. But then they'll go ahead and like five minutes later and be like, thank you, Tash. You've 
caused so much business for us or for this business that yeah. you protested? Like, which Either one is all. it? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Popularity. So far as my business is concerned, I've trebled my income. I'm now, in her words, having to murder more animals because of their actions. Unfortunately, there was a bit of a trade-off. I lost um, my partner because of this. Uh, yeah, it's actually disgusting because now this is not the first time there's been like a huge YouTuber make a video of this specific a current affair interview with him. Someone else has as well. And obviously this being on mainstream national Australian television, it's created this narrative that I've caused, I'm this evil person who's caused this relationship breakdown when it happened before I even set foot in his restaurant. It's actually fucking disgusting. The trial has revealed that Vegan Booty hasn't only falsified her taxable income, but she's also been able to ruin another marriage. This might explain why five uh, we at lie number 120 Yeah, and that's a now. massive lie. That's really just getting into defamatory now. Um, yeah. So this the this the title of that article was that Tash falsified her tax incomes, and it was shown so in court. What a fucking lie! Massive, massive lie, and that's part of the problem of the mainstream media, the West Australian um, news agency that published that article, which was completely defamatory yeah yeah it's disgusting so yeah in in the supreme court the lawyer deliberately only sh showed um one part of my tax return and basically accused me of committing tax fraud and then the next day the judge found out that he had deliberately on only shown this particular part and found the rest of the tax return which showed the rest of my income that I'd announced so I have never committed tax fraud in my life and the media took that and headlines came out that I've committed tax fraud so it's and now disgusting. it's been published on a video with over two million views yeah and saying that I've caused another marriage breakdown I mean how is asking questions speaking up for non-human animals going to cause a marriage breakdown what the actual fuck I mean, yeah, it's just, I'm just like the punching bag in all these situations. I'm made out to be this evil, like psychotic human when I'm literally just trying to stop animals from being abused and murdered. You're the it's opposite. just insane. People always want to forget the victims. So they, as I said earlier, they attack the messenger and not the message because they're so guilty for what they do to animals. They have to do everything they can to deflect from the real problem here, the problem that they're causing to animals. I is also suing Tash. This is gonna teach her a lesson. If she's fine that amount of money, she's gonna think twice. And while she's always stayed. No, I'm not. I don't care if I'm fined tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's not gonna stop me from speaking up for the victims of the animal holocaust. In fact, I've been in and out of court so many times for the past coming over four years now actually over four years and I've lost count how many times I've been convicted charged fined for my activism as a direct result of speaking up for non-human animals so that's cost me in the tens of thousands of dollars has it stopped me fuck no I actually measure my own success by the amount of haters and criticism that I have. It seems penalty after penalty is finally taking its toll. Her public nuisance stunts are becoming far less frequent, as most of her content now focuses on street interviews. Do you have a moral justification for animal abuse? Yummy. <laughs> Vegan booty will likely never change, but maybe she's reached a decent middle ground that's respectful not just to animals, but people's lives as well. Fuck no. <laughs> Respectful to animal abusers? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh Hell no. God. There's no. nothing more disrespectful than what non-vegans do to animals, so we're knowing we're never going to show them the respect um, that they want. There's no middle ground there is when no a holocaust ground. is happening. The largest holocaust in human history. No one would be saying this about Nazis. There's no respect for what Nazis did in the exact same way there is no respect for what non-vegans do to animals. So, yeah. Anything else, Tash? Yeah, watch Dominion on YouTube or you can go to watchdominion.org and see 
why we do this. Yeah. I mean, see the victims of your food, clothing, and lifestyle choices and actually understand why we're speaking up for them. And then the next thing is you are morally obligated to be vegan and stop abusing animals and join us. Start speaking up for them so we can see animal liberation and end the animal slavery and Holocaust industries. Yeah, perfectly said. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I don't know. Like, share, subscribe, all that bullshit. So <laughs> that's it. Um, just another bullshit video as expected a load of fucking lies jeez i've never seen so many lies in one video but uh yeah as tash said watch dominion see exactly why we do what we do um if humans or other animals that people love such as dogs were in the positions of the animals that we speak up for everybody would be praising us um the only difference here is they're of a different species and everybody is speciesist uh, in that case, it's no different to being a racist or a sexist. We're just speaking up for all animals, regardless of species.